with all due respect, welcome and come on in. It's good to see you again. Pull up a chair and uh, get comfortable. I see you have your Bibles with you and uh, your notepad. So let me ask you something. Whatever happened to good manners? Whatever happened to respect? Are we not all the same in life, position, and authority? And when are we to use a person's preferred pronouns? So, here's what happened. When I was younger, I was living in the south of the United States, specifically in the Texas and Louisiana areas. The younger adult and even the children would always address their elders as Mr. or Mrs., followed by either their first or their last names. If they were addressing a professional, such as a doctor, they would say, Dr. Stephen. If they were talking to an office holder, they would address the person as Mr. President, or Mr. Mayor, or Madam President, or Madam Mayor. They would never use just the person's first name unless they were a family member, a close personal friend, or unless the person told them to use their first name. It was always a sign of respect for the person, for their office, or both. I adopted that manner of addressing others as my permanent style, and to this day, you will never hear me address my doctor by his or her first name. I always refer to them as doctor followed by their first name. When I meet with the mayor of our town, I always address him as, or her, as Mr. Mayor or Madam Mayor, out of respect for them personally and out of respect for their office. When I was younger, I would always address my pastors as either Pastor or as Pastor John. I would never call him by his first name and I would address his wife as pastor, followed by her first name. If I ever have the opportunity to meet with a former head of state, such as a former president, I would never say, good to see you, Donald. I would say, good to see you, Mr. President. Even if I did not agree with his policies while he was in office, or even if I did not like him personally, I would always show respect for his office. And wouldn't it be better to be overly polite and formal and then invited to talk on a more personal level than to be openly rebuked and lose your audience? Psalms chapter 6, verse 1 says, O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, neither chasten me with your hot displeasure. Recently, I had the occasion to deal with various employees of a company that allegedly existed to serve the Christian church. Every time that I would correspond with someone in their company, I would sign my name and use my official title as pastor. And every time that they would respond, they would omit that office title and address me by my first name as if we were best friends or colleagues. Now, if I had been dealing with a secular company, I would not have expected to be addressed so formally, but since they were allegedly a Christian company offering their services to the Christian churches, and because I had identified myself as Pastor Stephen, 
I expect it to be addressed accordingly. I was not particularly offended by their omission, but throughout my encounters with them, they acted like they were my superiors and that I was their subordinate. They not only fail in basic polite etiquette and in good manners, but they failed to remember that I was a new client and that their business would not exist if it were not for the songs and music that I was willing to license to them. What I learned is that the culture of this company, from the head of operations down to the receptionist who answered the telephones, had no concept of respect or honor. In fact, they falsely believed that their clients existed to serve them and not the other way around. As a result, they not only lost a new client, but they lost out on the blessings of serving and helping the pastor of a church and had placed themselves and their operations in jeopardy of being punished by God. I will show you what I mean by that in just a minute. Now, this is not the first time that this has happened to me. It is simply the most recent event. And I was not expecting any favored or special treatment from them as a pastor, but it caused me to think about why I felt that they had failed in what I considered to be the most basic of Christian courtesies. So, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 13, and let's take a look at verses 1 through 7. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7. What is the basis for giving honor and respect? To whom should we give honor and respect to? What does it mean to give respect and honor? What does that really mean? Romans 13, verses 1 through 5. Everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Now, I have to remind you that this says that all authority comes from God, and that those in positions of authority have been placed there by God, even if we do not like what they do or the decisions that they make. And this is a hard lesson to learn. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9 tells us that, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways says the Lord in verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We are not to make the decision to follow them, agree with them, obey them, or even to like them unless what they do or say is in conflict with with the Word of God. We are to respect them. And if we cannot respect them, then we are to show respect for the office that they have been placed into. To do anything differently is to say that we consider our wisdom is better than God's wisdom, that our ways are better than God's ways, and that we know better than God. Do we really want to go there? Verse 2. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right 
and they will honor you. For the authorities are God's servants sent for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. In verse 5, so you must submit to them not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. This does not tell us to agree with them when they are wrong, but it does tell us to honor them to avoid punishment. Let's turn over to Romans chapter 13, verse 7. Romans 13, verse 7. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Okay, so we have to ask, to whom should we give honor to? Let's turn over to Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. This does not tell us to agree with him when they are wrong, but it promises us that we will have a long and fulfilling life if we will honor our mother and our father. Now, in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32, we read, Stand up in the presence of the elderly and show respect for the aged. Fear your God, I am the Lord. Let me ask you, when was the last time you saw a teenager or a young adult actually stand up when an adult came into the room, not to mention when an elderly person entered. Okay, turn uh, in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17 in the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. We read, Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, Honor the king. This is very good advice. If you cannot respect the person, at least show respect for the office that they occupy. So moving on, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, and see who else we should honor. 1 Timothy 5, 17 and 18 says, Elders who do their work well should be respected and paid well, especially those who work hard at both preaching and teaching. Now, the King James Version um, reads, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Looking at Philippians chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, Philippians 2, 17 and 18, we read that we are to honor those who labor faithfully. Verse 17 says, But I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. Do I always agree with the advice of my doctors? No, but I always respect and honor them. Did I always agree with my pastor when I was younger? No, but I always treated him with respect and honor. The expression, with all due respect, is really a sarcastic way of saying that there is no respect due. 
to the one that you're talking about or the one that you're talking to. Now, in the regards to the incident that I've been talking about with you, would it have hurt any of them to address me by my preferred title as pastor? No, of course not. Would it have made the negotiations any better? Maybe, maybe not. Should they have remembered that they are there to serve the body of Christ and not the other way around? Absolutely. Would it have benefited them to remember that the client is the one who brings the product to them and that without the client's products, they would have no business? Of course. So what's my point in all of this? I don't know. Other than to say that those in authority over you are there to help you. Even if you do not go to the same church as I do, if you will show respect for the office of pastor, the Lord will see your humility and you will be rewarded. Every time my wife and I visit another church, we always address the pastor and his wife as pastors. And we do not presume that we will be invited to speak informally with them. A wise pastor once said to a foolish king that to obey is better than sacrifice and to be rewarded is much better than to be punished. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 19 says, An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. And it doesn't hurt to remember that one day you just might hear, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of these, the least of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. So show your manners. Show that you are a child of the king and that you have been raised properly in his courts of praise. You will be honored and respected, and things will go much better in life for you for having done so. So thank you for your time, and thank you for letting me share this with you. It is always good to spend time together in the presence of the Lord. So until next time, may the Lord bless you, protect you, guide you and guard you as you follow hard after him. God bless.